repercussions of that are what we have today. But when I was a kid in the eighties, this these kind of things were they were they were issues, but they weren't issues to the point where children's activities and opportunities for kids just to have regular things like lunch at school, you know, books and, and backpacks. a lot of guys making music like that, but right now we have a, a real dilemma with uh, the level of electronic music artists trying to do things that are, ref are reflective of what's happening in the community. A lot of it is tied to just being young and just having visions and dreams. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, my, if I made music today, my dreams and visions would be very different because I'm a very different person. But at that time, so much of a cosmos mentality, I don't know. But uh, but just being visionaries, I think we always imagined that we were that. We always imagined that we could see into the future. The magic is still here, but it's in a very small bottle. Because right now, when you look around in Detroit, we have very little creative, uh, we have very few young artists coming up making this music, very few. Electronic music legacy is what's in danger. They went tra chasing the uh, chasing the pot of gold. They ran to Berlin and they ran to New York. They left Detroit. They believed that they could do better elsewhere. Melancholy moments, or from moments of being a child, or like my grandfather was really important to me, and I only made a lot of my music thinking about my grandfather. transition stage of my life. I had a girlfriend at that time, I'd broken up with her, and I wanted to break up with her because it just was, um, yeah. it was a lot of different things happening in my life. I wasn't sure musically, creatively, what I wanted to do. Wanted to do. It was a transition on that level. It was a transition because of the music business, I hated the music business. People were pulling on me to be this prodigy, to be this sort of next big time guy. And I didn't want to be the next guy, and I just walked away from everything. And then I one winter day, I just decided to make that song. ourselves and we had our own philosophy. Our own philosophy was just that we didn't care what anybody thought. We didn't we didn't believe there was a world outside of what our dreams were. Our dreams were this futuristic idea of music. You know, we we place everything in that. And people have always want to know, it's always a curiosity, a mystery. <laughs> and I understand that. But for us it was the isolation. You know, Detroit is like living in Siberia. We are here alone. This is the very end or the very beginning of America. So what happens here, very little influence comes from the left or the right. It's a very unique place to live because we don't take much influence from anything. For me, it was just nice chords and it was a great opportunity to make a wonderful song. And then later when I listened to it, I realized it's, it's part of a soundtrack. 
It's part of a movie that hasn't been written. songs together. There's this impression that Carl was with me on every song or whatever he wasn't, of course. He was very, he was only 18 years old. It was just romantic music being made with a melancholy heart. Mm -hmm. 